We've got a brisk wind, very brisk, blowing in from center field. This is going to impede yeah. the attempt at home runs today. Look at that wind, and uh, we expect it to stay pretty steady throughout the afternoon. Anybody gets it out today deserves a big pat on the back. The wind is not quite as angry in right field because of the Mike Moore Performance Center, which blocks off a good bit of it. But anything from center field to left is going to be impeded by that wind. Yeah, nobody should be telling their teammates get in the weight room if they hit it to the warning track. That's the truth. The 1 1 pitch sliced foul. Right now, sunny skies mostly, 81 degrees, no chance of rain. And uh, 12 miles an hour is the official wind gauge right now, but at times it's blowing a lot harder than that. That pitch yeah. misses low and away. Yeah, come out to the ballpark. It's a bad day for fishing. Good point. This ballpark is nearly full. Another very good crowd on hand and still coming in. The 2-2 pitch hit sharply and grabbed by Carly Petty at second base. Nicely done, as usual, by Petty to Macy Bergeron. And a strike to KK McCrary. McCrary's she sister, Hannah, is on the Missouri gymnastics team. Athletic family. Very much so. McCrary is one for five in the series. LSU has used three starting pitchers. Shelby Burr's on on Friday. She pitched the complete game and absorbed the loss. Kelly Lynch. Brilliant yesterday with the third no hitter in which she's been involved. The first two were at Washington and a seven inning no hitter by Lynch last night. It was a beauty. It was. And if you missed it in the open, it was the first LSU no hitter against an SEC team since 2007. And that was Emily Turner in Arkansas. I just text her to tell her that and she her response was ah a mother of two now the three one pitch is a strike McCrary didn't think so Eugene Linty the third base coach saying that's okay see it down see it down three balls two strikes on KK McCrary Lynch tried to hit the same spot, but missed tying away. Chafin. Uh, you're right. KK McCrary draws the base on balls from Raylan Chafin. Doesn't hurt to mention Lynch again, no, does it? I no, mean, no. What a performance last night. What drama. What an explosion of emotion and joy. And, and, and how cool her mom and her sister were here to witness it. Here's Woolers. Anna takes a strike. Woolers is two for seven in the series. And interestingly enough, to show you how good the pitching has been, she is the only Auburn player in this series with two hits. Woolers is a transfer from DePaul, and uh, Eugene Linty, the third base coach, was a longtime coach at DePaul. But Woolers was an all Big East first team last year. Well, she's been a good player for Auburn. Good pickup. Very good. Hitting 348, which leads the team. Chafin with that 68 mile an hour ball there. Chafin's velocity has increased three to four miles an hour from uh, her previous seasons at LSU. And it's surprising. She's got, uh, we've said it a million times, that slow wind up and bam, here it comes. Rise ball out of the zone at 67 miles an hour. You two got, balls, two strikes, got one out, one on. Very interesting story to share with us later on whenever you find it appropriate about Chafin's background. The 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. You see that ball breaking late outside. 
good looking screwball, I believe here. Yep, right there on the outside corner. Coming into the game, she had fans 62 in 68 and two thirds innings. Only 29 walks. LSU's pitching has recorded on yesterday behind the brilliance of Lynch in the circle. Two to nothing. Here's Peralta. Check swing. Lynch comes out of the circle, grabs it, throws it overhand to first base. And Shelby Lowe is in the circle for the second time in this series for Auburn. And she won the first game on Friday night. We're going to see curve, change, rise. She'll, her highest velo is 64. That change up is going to come in 55. She's going to work both sides of the plate with that curveball. Lowe is 6 and 3 on the year, a 3 and a half ERA, 44 innings. And she's only walked eight. Her control has been really good. She has struck out 47. She's not a pitcher that's going to overpower you with speed and high velocity, but she really knows how to throw strikes in all parts of the plate and uh, can keep you off balance. She's the spinner where Pint is the power. Ruta D. North Carolina. LSU has hit the ball well against left-handed and right-handed pitching this year. 307 as a team against lefties, and that's what we've got today. And 325 against right-handed pitchers. Of course, LSU's lineup is laden normally with left-handed batters. And seven of them in the game today. Two balls, two strikes on McKenzie Rudity. Low in her start on Friday went four and a third innings, allowed five hits, a couple of runs, walked one, didn't strike out anybody. Here's the 3 2 pitch to Rudity. Looped down into foul ground and out of the reach of KK McCrary. As you said, Lowe's not going to rack up the big number in K's. Does a very good job with uh, not issuing walks. Briggs and Newland will follow. Here's the 3 2 pitch. Came in on the hands. That might have been ball four, but Rudity swung to protect the plate. That drops out of the strike zone, and Ruderty with a very patient at bat draws the leadoff base on balls, which is unusual against Lowe. We just got finished saying how, you know, she doesn't hurt herself with freaky on the infield. Willers is catching, Lowe is pitching. Lowe struggling to find the zone right now. Briggs bunts it foul. Sierra is two for six in the series. Rudity also is two for six. Briggs on a 14 game hitting streak that ties a career high. And over that period, she's batting a robust 458. That bunt twists off foul just by a couple of inches as it was spinning on the stripe and then took a right turn. Shelby Lowe's sister Whitney played for East Mississippi Community College. The Alabama girl. And LSU's starting pitcher, Chapin, her sister played for Northwestern State yep. as a fine outfielder. Yeah. Put the two families together and you almost have a team. A tag on the runner results in the first uh, first out. 
as uh, Rudity ran right into that tag. Softball 101, could she have stopped? Of course oh, she... Oh yeah, she could have just hit the deck, but they would have gotten got an out, an out anyway. There was yep. no chance to double up Briggs. Yep, got an out. Who's on on the fielder's choice. And it brings on Allie Newland. Newland is one for six in the series. She has either been first or second all season long in batting average for LSU. She is having an extraordinary season offensively and defensively. The 0-1. Grounded right back to the circle, low to the shortstop, the relay. Pulled her up the bag. That was looking like a very doable double play, but the throw from second base pulled Milanowski off the bag. Yeah, she would have been out by at least a step. For sure. Good turn there, but then just not a good throw there. So a fielder's choice officially. But Low and her teammates ought to be back in the dugout. Here is Raylene Gutierrez. Two outs, a runner at first. Gutierrez golfs one foul. She's one for six in the series. LSU with 12 hits in the two games prior to this one. Daniel and Petty and Briggs and Ruderty are the four Tigers with two base hits. The one strike pitch coming to Gutierrez. That was close. Willers turned around and said something. Low looked on in disbelief from the circle. And Mickey Dean came out and said, I don't know what he said, but it wasn't have a nice day. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. And the runner moving, there is no throw. No throw, because she was trying to frame that pitch to get that call. So LSU, which does not steal a lot of bases, puts Newland in motion, and she's now in scoring position. Unless Beth Tarina picked up that change up, which she's very, very good at. Just a great pitch to run on. She guessed right. Now the two and one pitch. Lowe is looking on as if to say, hey, and Mickey Dean is going to go to the circle officially, but he's also going to bark on the way yep. out there. Let's see these pitches. Oh, my. Right now, the last two hitters, the strike zone has been the size of a postage stamp. Mickey Dean in his seventh and final season as Auburn head coach and coaching in this ballpark for the last time in his career. He is stepping away. He's got some health concerns. He told me earlier that he would certainly like to get back into the game when, when he takes care of his own business. And, we and he's done a fine, fine job at Auburn. And we pray that uh, he gets back real quick. I like him a lot. I do too. It's a class act last night. He went up to um, to Kelly Lynch and congratulated her. I mean, there's a couple of reasons he didn't have to do that. First, she no hit him, and second, she, as you said, had originally committed to Auburn, and in the had committed to Auburn. And then there was a coaching change. That's what brought on Mickey Dean. That ball There's is hit run. up the middle, and it's good into center field. Here's the throw. It will be late. LSU takes an early lead, and Gutierrez on the throw. Steams to second base. Stealing. An RBI single for Gutierrez. Newland put herself in scoring position with that stolen base and scored on the roller up the middle. Hitting in with runners in scoring position. Big bugaboo for LSU in the last couple of years, but not there. 
Mickey Dean came out once again to look at Blue and say, you probably caused that. Strike zone is awfully tough these days. I mean, that, that has a lot to do with why the numbers are so elevated offensively. Taylor Pleasance takes a strike. She's looking for her first base hit in the series. And we're talking about American postage stamp size, not European. <laughs> Pleasance trying to collect her first hit. She was robbed of a home run in the first game. One and one. Pleasance in her first 12 games, hitting 485, the last 28, just 205. That's very un Taylor Pleasance like. Too good to keep down, though. She'll bust out of it, but not there. It's popped up. Weidra makes the play. But LSU runs itself into a run with a fielder. And Auburn gave Tennessee one of those losses. Raylan Chafin rocks and fires with a 1 0 lead and promptly hits Michaela Packer. And Packer, she didn't move an inch. I'm not sure Beth Serena comes out to ask, but I mean, she's in the box, didn't move an inch, and she doesn't oh, have she's to. asking if she stuck her leg out. I don't think she did. Chafin mm -hmm. has plunked 12 batters this year. She's not afraid to throw inside. At the bun Packer on, on the move, and, and she can really run. Now, We've got some speed in this game today, Yvette, and Packer is part of it. Now, Packer, when we, we didn't get to really check this out, but you're right, she can run. Went to the Baylor School in Chattanooga. She's a senior now. And Sydney Burzon for LSU, LSU is a sophomore, and, and she went to the Baylor School in Chattanooga. Well, so did Packer, somebody tell me if they played together on that team. Did Packer leave prematurely? LSU thinks so, and they've asked for a review. So Birmingham will decide here. Our production team at LSU will sync it up and feed the evidence to Birmingham. And they've already looked at it twice, probably. The review involves a premature release from first base. Was it illegally done or not? Let's take a look. Let you decide. Hard to tell where Chafin's hand is. I think I think they're going to stand with the call. After review, the ruling on the field is upheld. The runner is safe. Hang on. So there was not sufficient evidence to overturn the stolen base. So she left legally, and this brings on Isis Tresvik. So whoever's job it was in the uh, dugout to watch that probably got demoted. <laughs> it was close. And that's why they need to get rid of the rule. Packer is now 13 out of 14 stealing bases. Of course, that's only my opinion. The 0-2 pitch to Isis Tresvik. Just kind of throws that bat out there. Oh, we could have Here's a double throw play. Here's the throwback at third. It's not in time. A very good throw from Gutierrez to Daniel. Only because Packer runs so well. She really does. Because Gutierrez would have probably had anybody else. So Tresvik is thrown out, and the throw back corner to corner is not quite in time. And what good, good base running by Packer. She knows her own speed. I mean, she's like one or two feet away from the bag, and she takes off and beats that throw. And it was a great throw from Gutierrez. Oh, almost hit her again. One out, a runner at third. Mariah Penta, who is the younger 
sister of Maddie Penta. Batting 213, three homers, 15 driven in. And her 16th RBI is 60 feet away with one out. She's ahead in the count, 2 and 0. Penta wants a long fly ball here or hit the ball to the right side. Chafin would love to record a strikeout. Do not swing at the first inside pitch and ground out to third. Here's the 2 0. A looper. It's handled on the infield, got and her. there's the important second out. Got her on a changeup, got her leaning. Carly Petty. Comes to the circle to make the catch. Two gone now. LSU's infield retreats. And Axe Milanowski, who's making her first start in this series, is at the plate now. She has come on in mid-game and replaced Leck at first base in the previous two games. Strike one. Milanowski is batting 267. She's one for two in the series and has played in the previous two games off the bench. Raylan Chafin delivers the 1 1 pitch. Check swing and a foul ball. The rhythmic clapping comes forth from the fans in the grandstand. Fans getting into it. They love SEC weekends. The one two pitch with two outs. Swing and a miss. That one kept inching away from the barrel of the bat. Millen. And then against your old team, a bet on Tuesday, UL will be taking on LSU. If LSU were to win that game, that would be the one that puts her on top. Wouldn't that be ironic? The two fates shall forever meet. Carly Petty flies to center field. And this brings on Kelly Lynch. It came to light overnight that Kelly Lynch actually committed to Auburn about five, six years ago. And then when Auburn made a coaching change, she went on and signed with Washington and of course winds up here in her final season through the transfer portal. But there is a connection between Kelly Lynch and Auburn. And you know it's 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 ironic, it's sad, and it's it's happy at the same time in a in a weird sort of way. But Kelly Lynch's no hitter last night, coming on the teal game day, with all of the emphasis on ovarian cancer, educating folks about it as Kelly Lynch strikes out. But Kelly Lynch's dad died from cancer when she was uh, around 12 years old, and it was extra special that juxtaposition of, of her event last night, remembering her father and of course, the much needed cancer education program through this ovarian emphasis. And it all came together and, and was a, a bittersweet moment, if you will. Oh, stories like that just, you know, touch your heart, give you goosebumps. I'm just so grateful and happy for her that her mom and her sister were here to share that. What a story, Helen. Huh, yeah, really. Bergeron batting with two outs. The 1 0 count. That's upstairs. Bergeron in the series is hitless in four at bats. This is her third start in the series. And the 2 0 drives one over the outside corner. LSU picked up a run in the first inning on an RBI single by Raylene Gutierrez. Oh, scoring good. Allie Newland. A timely steal off the second base. The 
That misses. A five pitch pass, ball four. Bergeron becomes a base runner on the second walk of the game by Lowe, which is unusual for her. And it's Daniel coming to the plate with two outs. Daniel. Sierra got the start yesterday and provided a couple of base hits. Did a good job. And also made a good play defensively at third base, charging the plate to pick up a ball and throw in the same motion. The 0 1. High and away. Big curveballs on the outside corner to Daniel. And then you look at the outfield and you see how they're shaded, and they're definitely going to pitch her away. Daniel is played as an extreme opposite field hitter. And the 1 1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Auburn will have a midweek game at UAB on the 17th before hosting Kentucky on the 20th, 21st, and 22nd. The one-two pitch coming to Daniel, who uses that split grip, and she fouls it away. Flapper, she does a good job of putting her bat on the ball. You see that split grip by about an inch? And the one-two pitch coming. To the young Sierra Daniel. She swings through it and misses. And Shelby Lowe picks up her second strikeout of the inning. And second of the game, we go to the. Annabelle Weidra chops the first pitch past Pleasance and over the head of Daniel at third. And that's the first base hit. Weidra comes through at the bottom of the order. She is not the typical ninth hole hitter. She's good, has a good average, gets on base a lot. So that's the first base hit in 10 innings. That's right. And here's Rose Roach, who grounded out to second base. It's just a one run game, so Auburn has all of its options available stolen bases, bunting, sacrifice flies, hit and runs. Don't see as many hit and runs in this game as you do baseball. The 1 0 pitch coming from Raylan Chaffin. Runner is on the move. They the guess. peg is a good one. And the tag is applied by Pleasance, who had to stretch to do it and then still had the strength to hold on to the ball. I tell you what, uh, everybody in the ballpark said she's going. Let's see if this is. Oh, look, it's kind of a pitch out. Uh, LSU guessed correctly. But Pleasance with that long inspector gadget reach was able to get it and it's it's not an easy thing when you're extended like that to hold on to the softball when you make contact with the runner. Bergeron one of the best in the league in throwing out base runners. And Auburn tried to tried to swipe one but was gunned down. Good job by the coaching staff. Good job by uh, Chafin to put that ball uh, on the pitch out where it's supposed to be. And of course, Bergeron has a cannon for an arm back there. She has thrown out six yep. of 16 runners, and that's a good she, percentage. She definitely can stop a team's running game. The 2 2 pitch coming to Roach from Chafin with one out. Roach is from Illinois. This one is chopped down to Gutierrez, who makes the play unassisted. Two outs, nobody on base. Left field number 16, Kincaid McCurry. 
Here's the left fielder KK McCrary. She go. No. Negative. KK is played straight away. Let's see if the call was correct. Yes. Close, but no swing. Yes, it was. Correct. Two and oh. McCrary has seven home runs. Seven home runs, but only 11 RBI. Yeah, that's crazy. A lot of single digit home runs, huh? Two doubles as well. Nine of her 26 hits have been for extra bases. But only 11 driven in on those seven home runs. The 3 0 pitch from Chapin burns the plate for a strike. The wind continues to hinder the hitters. There's a five pitch base on balls. And for Chafin, that's walk number two. Both of them have come to McCrary. Here's Anna Woolers. She was the difference offensively in the first game of the series. She had a double in the top of the seventh inning of game one and then scored the winning run. That's a foul ball by about a foot. Good pickup for Auburn in the portal. A transfer from DePaul. And she's been the leading hitter most of the year for Auburn. She is right now. And a good receiver for an excellent pitching staff. That's a check, check swing. swing roller, and Chafin's on it quickly. Nearly threw it away, but Raylene Gutierrez with that nimble stretch is able to get it. Willers is thrown out one to three. It's another shutout inning for ball events for USA softball. This is the national team and they are Aliyah Andrews, Air Andrews, former pitcher Carly Hoover, Savannah Jaquish, who's still playing at a very high level and Taylor Pleasance. They are the four selected for play on USA softball. Andrews and Pleasance are on the 2024 Japan All-Star Series roster, and they'll compete in a three-game series in July in Japan. Hoover, Hoover and Jaquish have earned a spot on the 2024 World Baseball Softball Confederation World Cup Finals roster, and that'll be played in Italy in the middle of July. So congratulations to those former and present LSU All Americas. Very cool. And they get to travel Europe and Asia. The backdoor curveball just misses. Carly Hoover has had a lot of success pitching in Japan. As she has. In fact, she's a, a former MVP in the Japanese league, yeah, dominating think, over there a couple of years ago I and still I, doing it. I think I saw her face like on a billboard on a, on a bus. Pretty cool. Here's Ruderdy. Checks her swing. I don't think she committed. She did not. It's two and one. McKenzie walked in the first. That's four pretty good players, huh? Air Andrews. Oh, yeah. Carly Hoover, Savannah Jaquish, and Taylor Pleasance. There are pictures on the wall, on that All American wall over there. KK McCrary is circling in left field and she's got it. Jaquish. I could be wrong, but in my opinion, maybe the best player to ever put on the purple and gold. She could catch. She played third base. And she got a hit. vicious swing. Could hit, and she was a prime time hitter. She could drive in RBIs. And when she you hit for them. average and power. Among the career home run leaders, in fact, number two. Briggs takes a strike from Shelby Lowe. 
She reached on a fielder's choice last time, batting 378. That's a current average, and it still leads LSU. Oh, and two. Briggs is never still when she comes to the plate. Never. Twisting the bat in her hands, walking all around, making marks in the dirt. That is her routine, and she has one. Helps she refocus. And she's had to reduce the routine a little bit with the uh, pitch clock. Yep. Because it forces her to get into the <laughs> batter's box and be alert to the pitch quicker than she used to. I think you're right. She must have, she had to have had the longest routine. Here's the 2-2 pitch. One out, nobody on base. A 1-0 lead for LSU. That came in the first inning on a two-out RBI single by Raylene Gutierrez. Still got plenty of time here to come out and work on your tan, and the, ta the park just keeps filling up. The wind is gusting to 20 miles an hour, and I think we're getting most of that right now. Here's the 2-2 pitch. A little bit high and away, so after throwing two strikes, Lowe has missed three times. You can see the uh, the flags are getting a workout. You're right, even the, the part that's shaded by the Mike Moore Performance Center, those flags are still moving pretty briskly. A 3-2 pitch. Rig stays alive. She got a little piece of that. This Auburn team has played much better the last couple of weeks than it did previously. The 3-2. They've got a very good pitching staff that allows them to compete every day they go out. Auburn is in the process of going through the research to replace Mickey Dean after he announced his retirement from Auburn. This will be his final year. The 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. That was quite the battle, wasn't it? And Shelby Lowe won it eventually. Came back with that. Uh, let's see what this is. Is it a backdoor curve? Yes, it is. It's like that ball's going to. Hit her on the hip and it breaks over right over the inside of the plate. That's a well delivered pitch by Lowe. Talk about Mickey Dean. He's over there calling the pitches. He does handle the pitching staff just like his opponent, Beth Tarina, handles hers. Allie Newland. Has scored the game's only run. She reached on a fielder's choice with two outs, wiped a base, and came home on the Gutierrez single up the middle. Newland is a student in the Manship School of Mass Communications at LSU. 
think she wants to work with Major League Baseball. Of course, she's from Georgia, so you think the Braves are her most favorite team? I'm kind of betting that. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, nobody on base, one nothing LSU, bottom of the third. That's a parking lot souvenir. You know what's interesting, Yvette? There's a whole counterculture in the parking lot. <laughs> yep. You know, on, on grabbing foul balls. I mean, the kids are out there, and they've got their own system, you know? I don't know if they give them free uh, Cokes, though, anymore. That's a routine ground ball to the right side. Roach turns it. In the SEC, Tennessee. Nelia Peralta bounced back to the circle last time. Couple of homers on the year, 23 driven in. One ball, one strike. That's bounced up the middle, a clean base hit by Peralta. So in each inning, Chafin has had to work with a Tiger aboard. There was a one out walk in the first. Chafin hit a batter to start the inning in the second. There was a single and a walk last inning, and this leadoff base hit by Peralta. Yeah, I think that was a changeup that just, you know, really didn't work. And we'll have a pinch runner for the Auburn Tigers. Abby Smith will occupy first base. Auburn brain thrust over there, coaching staff deciding if they're going to sacrifice the runner over. Remember, Bergeron has already thrown out one base stealer. That's Here's exactly the what they did. Gutierrez pounces on it and gets it over to Petty at first base for the out. A three to four bunt put out. The sacrifice moves, moves uh, Smith into scoring position. Good bunt. Very good. Do your job. Here's Tresvik. Oh, look at here. She could run this out, could she? Nobody there. And the throwback, not in time. Sierra Daniel made an excellent decision not to throw the ball to first base. That's Absolutely. going to be a bunt base hit. Nothing good could have come from a throw to first base. Isis was on the 2023 SEC All-Tournament team. But look at here, Petty is late getting there, so good job by the freshman in putting that in her back pocket. Tries to uh, maybe pick off the runner at third. That maybe took too big a lead, but good base front running by Auburn there. And for the fourth consecutive inning, but that was Chafin a, will have to work with runners on base. Excellent bunt for a base hit, or as the Cali kids call it, the sneaky bunt. Amelia Leck is going to bat for Penta. Leck has played a lot of starting first base this year for the Tigers and started the first two games in this series. Tresvik is, uh, he's got a ton of stolen bases. See if they run a first and third here. Leck is 0 for 3 in this series. Oh. Stee, uh, right. Not on the first pitch. Trying to draw, oh, look at here. It's a delayed steal. 
trying to get this run. Now and the runner worked. from first it winds worked. up at second. So it's a delayed steal to everything is trying to get the runners to second base. I thought Pleasance might have held it yeah, a if second she, too long. If she'd have ran at her and made her commit. This has popped up. Pleasance too, will too, yield. Too shallow to run. To Newland. Pleasance made a good decision. She probably could have caught that ball backing up. But Newland has the easier play. And then, of course, she's Absolutely. facing the potential action Absolutely. on the infield. And Leck was put in to do one job, and that was to hit the ball deep. Chafin avoids the run again. She still needs to work on another out. Two on, two out. One nothing LSU. That's tight to Milanowski. Axe struck out in the first. That drops in for a strike, an off-speed pitch. There's the change up there that does work. Have you ever known anybody named Axe? No. Alexis is her first name, but she prefers Axe. Got to be a story to that. Just, yeah. The one one is upstairs. Now, if you're a good Cajun, you would just go Axer. That's true. Not ask, X. Two balls and a strike. Another change Another up. change, you're exactly right. At a good location. Don't think they'll throw a third. But see, Chafin really sells this. Yeah, I mean, she goes all out in that pitch. And she got the benefit of the doubt on the pitch that uh, was on the outside part of the plate, perhaps off the plate. Here's the 2-2 pitch, and a big one coming from Chapin. Almost swing, but that's definitely a ball off the plate. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. Both in scoring position for Auburn. LSU one, Auburn nothing in the top of the fourth. Milanowski will try to do something about it. Chapin will try to prevent it. Ball four, the bases are full of Tigers. Flirting with disaster. Three walks from Chapin. And two strikeouts. So Witra is a transfer from Michigan. Weidra lobs one into shallow it's a base right hit. that drops for a base hit. One Tiger scores. Here comes another one. The second Tiger scores. Safe at third base. Auburn has taken the lead this on a soft single to right by nice. Annabelle Weidra. And Auburn had the ability and the option to be running on contact. And it gets a couple of runs out of that soft base hit to right field. Just a, singing eye, a seeing eye single here. And of course, yeah, two outs, everybody's motoring. And then the play's not really close. Earn her scholarship back here with a runner at third. That's the very first pitch we see. Skyler Elkins is the pinch runner at third. So she is running for Milanowski. That's Elker, Elkins, E-L-K-I-N-S, pinch running for Milanowski at third base. Roach at the plate. Runner on first is on the move and another foul ball. Two strikes, two outs, two on, two in for Auburn here in the fourth. Burzon coming in and throwing strikes. First two pitches, strikes. And you're right, the runner at first base was going. I'm sure she'll go again. 
Heel sewn party, and here's the throw. And they're going to steal a run at home. That didn't work for LSU. That didn't work at all. There was a throw through to Taylor Pleasance, who had no chance to tag the runner or throw it back to the plate as she was scoring. Well, your first job really has to look at the runner at third base. No first run, he glanced at her at all. So Auburn steals a base and a run. And it's three to one. And a liner to the right side is grabbed by Carly Pett lead, but the Tigers surrendered it by yielding three in the top of the fourth. Now it's Gutierrez opening the bottom of the frame for LSU. We saw that progress early on, maybe the first weekend of the series uh, of the season with Gutierrez, and we were like, who is this girl? Saving her best for last in her senior year. It appears she uses a slightly split grip. We'll take a look here. Yep, just a little bit of space between the hands on the bat. The two strike pitch. What a Smashed shot. Down to her counterpart and picked up by Milanowski. Holy cow, you can't hit it any better than that. And you can't field it any better than that. It's a rocket. So one first baseman takes out the other on a vicious would-be base hit by Gutierrez. Good thing she wasn't playing up like we used to do in the old days. Here's Pleasance. Try to fight out of a slump. Taylor is hitless in this series, and her average has descended to 282. It's a gritty Auburn team. You know, they don't light it up offensively, but they figure out ways to score. They're very good with runners in scoring position. And as you mentioned, the strength of this team is pitching. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And with pitching, good pitching, you should play good defense, which they do. Oops. Pleasance is hit by a pitch, and the Tigers will take base runners any way they can get them right now. LSU trailing three to one. That skipped in front of the ankle of Pleasance and then bounced up against her leg. And there will be a pinch runner. I think this is Gilio. Yep. So Gilio is running for Taylor Pleasance with one out. Lowe has only hit three batters this year. So her control not only with hit batsmen but also walks has been extraordinary. Shelby brings it to Carly Petty. Carly Petty, the hero in the midweek game against Southeastern Louisiana. And also on Friday night. Yep. Having a good week. Can she do it again? She flirted with a home run yesterday, which would have been her third home run in as many games. Gilio is on the move. The swipe tag safe. Gilio gets around the tag somehow on the back side of the base, and she puts herself in scoring position. That's all around the country this week. No score in the first between Florida and Missouri. Here, here we review, go. The ruling on the field is upheld. The runner is safe. So Gilio did not leave early. And Texas A&M and Alabama will play a little bit later. So could he use his same challenge here and challenge the tag? You could. 
if you wanted to use another challenge. Right. But it could be a big one. Of course, he doesn't have our vantage point. And I, I think you could. That's a that's a very good question. Yeah, it had can to come you up. Use, can you use both of your challenges on, the same on different play. parts yeah. of the same play? Yeah. Hadn't that's happened that's yet. worthy of a query to the Southeastern Conference office. It sure is. I mean, you have two. Betty waves through it. You know, the Tigers have had some trouble with lefty pitchers. They're so lefty dominated in their lineup, so that big time sweeping curveball is just so hard for them to catch up to. And this is what you see here. That's an excellent pitch from Shelby Lowe, resulting in her fourth strikeout. I mean, Lowe's only given up one hit. They've, they actually, hit the ace, Matty Pinta, a little bit better than they've hit Shelby Lowe. She has a win this under time, her belt This already. time Lowe drives in a breaking pitch on the right-handed batter. Started it outside and it came back and got a piece of the plate. Kelly Lynch struck out in the second. And she takes another strike. This has been a really, really fine effort by Shelby Lowe. She has limited LSU to one hit that came in the first inning with two outs. It was an RBI single by Gutierrez, and that's been it. Yep. Lynch just asked Blue where it was, and he told her, and she shook her head like, okay. The pitch fouled away. Telling herself, then I'm going to swing at that pitch that you're calling. Low has walked two, struck out four, surrendered one run on one hit. One of those two walks was costly because it got the inning started back in the first. And the 0-2, just off the plate wide. The wind has not stopped here. Still blowing in briskly. Gusting to 20 and steadily at 10 to 12. Ooh, backlash today if you went fishing. The one two pitch. Looped out of play right side. You could launch a kite very easily today. You could launch it. Would it stay intact? When's the last time you at the beach. flew a kite? Oh, my door of the Explorer at the beach. That's wonderful. I love that kite. A called third strike to win the series. And uh, the Auburn Tigers will bat here in the fifth. KK McCrary is the first hitter and takes a look at ball one from reliever Burzon. Sydney is working her first complete inning of relief. She retired Roach coming out of the bullpen in the fourth. McCrary and Woolers and Peralta for the Auburn Tigers. The 1-1. One, one. Catches a piece of the outside corner. Backyard of the McCray house, one daughter playing catch, the other one doing flip-flops, somersaults. The 2-2 two -two to McCrary. Ground ball Pleasance. It takes a waist-high hop. She guns it over to Gutierrez. One gone. And there's that ground ball out, something that you expect with Burzon and that tremendous drop ball that she throws and can get a ton of K's with that ball, with that pitch. Willers is 0 for 2, a strikeout and a ground out back to the circle. Ball one, and the crowd is howling. 
Burzon let loose with a 70 mile an hour pitch that time. This will be playable. Gutierrez is calling for it and catches it exactly halfway between the pitcher's plate and home plate. Good call by Gutierrez. Daniel tried to come into the picture, but let her take charge. So two quick outs. And here is Nelia Peralta. Peralta is a junior shortstop. Here's a 1 0 pitch, swing and a miss. Spurs on chain speeds, and that one had some sink to it at the end as well. It's one of those video pitches, video game pitches are strike one, strike two, strike three. That'd look awfully good also. Burzon has a huge glove. Look at the size of that piece of leather. I mean, that's a cow and a half. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Tomahawk that pitch. Tried to go upstairs with that pitch. Two outs, nobody on base. Burzon asks for time and backs away. Yep, couldn't quite get it correct from Beb Tarina from the dugout. And now the one we way go at communication. Two. Dustin Douglas is calling balls and strikes. Paul Eads is at first base. Heath Walker working the other corner. And the 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. And there's that drop ball in the dirt that and gets so throw, many strikeouts. The throw to first base is required. Only one base hit so far. Second game in a row that the K Tigers have trouble with the left handed low. KK McCrary has plenty of time to catch this off the bat of Macy Bergeron. Shelby Lowe has been superb for Auburn. She is controlling the hitters, not striking out a lot of folks, although she does have five, which is a good number. Well, she's making those big pitches in uh, crucial situations. Well, LSU has never gotten into the comfortable stage at the plate with her. It's just such a good matchup against the Tigers with all their lefty hitters. Curveball pitchers from the left side that throw hard like that. Low held the Tigers to two runs on Friday night. Here we go to Sierra Daniel. A smack up the middle, Daniel has three base hits and a couple of starts in this series. Daniel hits so many line drives. She stays long on that ball. So Daniel singles from whence it came. A liner up the middle and back to the top of the order we go for Mackenzie Ruderty. Ruderty has walked and flied to left field. Ground ball hugs the line and is foul. 
That one took a little bit of a right turn, fortunately for the Tigers of LSU. Right. He was slow developing that ball. Sent a laser into the center field bleachers with a teammate aboard yesterday to support the no hitter by Lynch. LSU winning it two to nothing. Here's the 1-1 pitch with one out, one on. Tying run at the plate for the Tigers. Hot ground ball, gobbled up. There's the stop. tag. And Daniels. out at first. Daniels, you have to stop. Once again. Well, it's not a. The war cry of Auburn. It's not a bald eagle. That's the golden eagle. And one of the great, great traditions in all of sports. I, very cool. When the Eagle is launched and circles the Auburn Tiger football stadium several times before landing with its keeper and, and its trainer down on the field. It's, you, it's, it's fun. And you say it's a tryout in the morning? Yeah, they have two Between or three Eagles. Eagles. They'll take up at 6 o'clock in the morning and see which one is having the best day. So there's a competition between Eagles <laughs> on each game. You know, if you don't warm up well, you don't play, That's right? right. So much. There's oh. a very respected Raptor center that's uh, run by Auburn University. And Eagles and Hawks of all kinds and really Raptors of all kinds. So I told being rehabilitated and, and released. Some are unable to be released, but right. will be given to zoos and other other caretakers. So I told my four-year-old great nephew that story, and he wanted to know why Mike the Tiger wasn't allowed to come out at the games. <laughs> well, now that would be a spectacle. <laughs> I said, because he's real? The 3-2 pitch grounded to the right side. Petty is there. On to Gutierrez. Packer is retired. Here's Isis Trezvik. She has grounded out and buntered her way aboard and wound up scoring a run in the fourth. Burzon has done her job so far. She's faced five batters, and they've all gone back to the dugout. Isis, as we said, obviously had a good all tournament last year. She was named to the 2023 SEC All Tournament team. And of course, that tournament's in Auburn this year, right? Mm hmm. This one is far enough out of play. The 0-2 pitch coming and well wide. Three runs, four hits for Auburn. All of the runs coming in the fourth inning. One run, two hits for LSU. The marker being produced in the fourth and the first. Sydney Burrs on in relief of Raylan Chafin. And that's outside. And after getting ahead two strikes, it's now a full count. Trying to get the hitter to chase some pitches out of the zone. And Burzon. Yeah, those pitches aren't walks close. Her. She's disappointed after throwing strikes and then eventually walking. 
the bitter the batter Trezvic after uh, starting 0 and 2. Here's Leck. It's how many straight balls now? Looks like the same pitch. One and no to Leck. Leck has had one at bat. And that was as a pinch hitter in the fourth. She flied to left field. Everything is elevated all of a sudden and out of the out of the zone. And that's not Burzon when she's at her best. No, and she's uh, she lives down around the knees and has certainly been effective for her career with Bur that hard sinker. Bergeron went out there to talk to her to say Beth Tarina conference here. The runner at first base after a base on balls. Two and one. She has not lost any velocity. That was at 71 miles an hour. It'll be Briggs, Newland, and Gutierrez for LSU in the sixth. And there is a pitch that was way up. Just like hitters, you just have to pick a spot, make some small adjustments, and zone down. Three and two now. Let's watch the runner Trezvic at first base. Auburn may put her in motion on a 3-2 pitch. She is not going, and there's a strikeout. Burzon came back and got Leck on strikes. She got that rise ball through the zone. Got out of the zone. Yeah, it's a great pitch there. Got to tip your cap to the pitcher on that kind of pitch. Here's Axe Milanowski. That's high and tight, ball one. Got to love how quick Burzon works. Just gets that signal and bam, she's gone. D right that levels the count of that, one. This that gorgeous drop ball that she throws. Auburn is trying to win the series and sustain the success it's had lately. Did we ever find out why it's called the rubber match? You know what? It actually dates back to the game of bowling. And then more recently, it's been used in card games, especially bridge. Did you just make all that up? Yes. No, not at all. Here's the 2-2, grounded foul. You know, this third game of the series, I don't really remember that eagle on the stick over there. I'm just I don't, know if it's more I don't think I've seen it before yeah. before this game. I think they engineered that last night or this morning. Looks like a totem pole with an eagle on top. There's a call, third strike. Milanowski goes down. Choice and struck out. She'll be followed by Newland and Gutierrez. And a chop foul. Briggs has done that a lot and yes, successfully over the course of her career. Use that hard ground to your advantage. God, Arizona used to be the masters of that. You couldn't even, I mean, there was no play to be made. One strike on Briggs. LSU needs base runners trailing by two in the sixth. Shelby Lowe has been brilliant in the circle for Auburn. That's a foul ball behind the plate. 
Lowe has walked two. She has struck out five. She has allowed a meager two base hits. We only have six in this game between the two teams. Good pitching performances. The 0-2. Chop to the third baseman. Weidra over to first base. Briggs is 0 for 3. Outside curveball. It's just money. An RBI single by Gutierrez in the first inning. And a one out single by Daniel last inning. And that's been it off of Shelby Lowe. She is throwing a gem right now. And she beat the Tigers Friday night. And the pitch. Spun back through the circle, handled by the second baseman. And the sling throw over to first. Milanowski holds on. Roach did a good job of staying with that spinner. And quickly there are two outs. And Shelby Lowe shows no sign of weakening. Not a lot of opportunities for the Tigers in six innings so far. As we said, only two hits. Ball one to Raylene Gutierrez. Great crowd out here today, Lynn. LSU needs a base runner to bring the tying run to the plate. There's a high strike. Lots of folks enjoying the hillside. Fans really come out during the SEC weekends. The 1-1. One, one. Just off the mark. And then wait till Texas and Oklahoma jo join this league. You don't have to wait long. It'll you, happen next year. You better get some season tickets if you want uh, some seats in those games. Or call a bet. She'll help you. <laughs> Do not call me. Got no connections. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, nobody on base. Shelby Lowe continues to shine. Ground ball down to Gutierrez's counterpart. In a fourth inning, two-run single. Ooh. And that's lined right to Daniel. Sierra lunged to her right and took the smoker for the out. Weidra came within inches of going three for three. Second baseman, 99, Rose Roach. Here's Rose Roach at the top of the order. The second baseman is 0 for 3. And this is the second time she has faced reliever Sidney Burzon. Ball one high. Burzon induced a line drive out to the second baseman last time against Roach. KK McCrary is on deck. 3 to 1, Auburn in the seventh. Gutierrez will have time and tags the runner. Well, you can't ask for more from Sydney Burzon. Ground ball out, ground She's ball out. She's faced one, ground two, ball three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine batters. And there's been only one base runner, and that came via walk. You could tell that drop ball is working. She's getting a lot of ground ball outs. Here we go. Ball one to McCrary. KK grounded out short to first in her only appearance against Burzon. Prior to that, she had walked twice against Chafin. Two and zero. Oh. LSU in the seventh will have Pleasance and Petty and Lynch coming to the plate. Good looking change up there.
Burrs on. One walk, three strikeouts, no hits. Out of play. That's in three complete innings of relief. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Burzon wants to get her team back to the dugout as quickly as possible. Pleasance can't get that. It's a base hit up the middle for McCrary. She's one for two now. It's the fifth hit for the Auburn Tigers there. They've out hit LSU five to two. And here is Willers first pitch swinging and lifting it out of play. And she's had a good weekend. 0 for three in this game, but yes, she has been a contributor. A strikeout, a ground out, and a, a couple of ground outs. That burns the inside edge. Petty is able to recover and get the out at first. Taylor Pleasance at the plate. Low delivers. Steve right. Pleasance is hitless in the series. A ground ball right side. It's off the glove of Roach. And the Tigers will bring the tying run to the plate with nobody out. Roach seemed to be a little slow in getting to that ball. It kind of looked like a disaster for her. Nonetheless, the Tigers have something to build on here in this last inning. Yeah, just kind of didn't quite get there. That's an error on the second baseman and the first bobble of the game. Let's see if that opens the door for LSU. Here's Carly Petty. She's 0 for 2. She has fly to center and struck out. Third baseman is in her face. I'm not sure. Weidra, I'm not sure that the LSU is going to bunt in this situation. Now, Pleasance will have to stay in the game for herself. She's been substituted for once already as a, for a, with a pinch runner. And the pitch inside that levels the count. One ball, one strike on Carly Petty. The outfield is straight away. The wind continues to whip in toward the hitter from center field. Here's the 1-1. One, one. A full swing and a miss. Lowe has walked two. She has struck out five. She has allowed only two hits. But the tying run at the plate in the seventh. She tried to rip that outside corner and pushed it a little wide. And Redra again is just playing to me so far off a third. Ball down the line. Pleasants can run for days. Here we go at the make it happen pitch. The 2-2. Two -two. A little looper. The out at second. That was well played by Roach. Absolutely. And that Pleasance, was not an easy play, and Roach was able to get the out. And Pleasance had to hold up because she didn't know if she was going to catch it or not in the air. Just a goofy hit ball that Pleasance had to wait on. And we may have a pinch hitter here. This will be Hannah Carson if it occurs. This would be the first time we have seen Carson in the series. So Carson is batting for Lynch, who has struck out twice. 
Hitting 231, eight driven in for Hannah. She's a veteran hand for the Tigers. And the pitch swung on and foul back. Auburn is two outs away from winning an SEC series for the first time this year. Here we go at 01. Now it's 02. Drop that change up in there. Popped up on the infield. Lowe is calling for it. Now gives way to the third baseman. And Weidra squeezes it. And LSU is down to its last out. Once again, that curveball on the outside corner to the lefties has just been dynamite for Lowe and kryptonite for the LSU Tigers. Can Macy Bergeron extend the game? She has walked and flied the left. The sophomore catcher from Rain, Louisiana, looks at a strike. 100 pitches and a masterpiece by Lowe this afternoon. This would give her two wins on the weekend if she gets this third out. Low to the plate. Belted on a line over the head of the left fielder against the wall. LSU will not risk the runner at third trying to take home. But Macy Bergeron indeed extends the game with a wall-banging double, and it puts the tying run at second base with two outs on her fifth double of the season. And what a big hit for Macy Bergeron. Tigers kind of looking a little desperate there. Gives him new life. Maya Townsend will run for Bergeron at second base. She represents the tying run. We've got drama with two outs in the seventh. LSU still trails by two. And here come the comeback Tigers, LSU Tigers. Had a base hit the last time up, Sierra Daniels. She's one for two. She has struck out and singled. And the pitch to the young infielder, Sierra Daniel. Low to the plate, strike one. Petty is at third base. Townsend are representing the tying run is at second with two outs. Outfield for Auburn playing her shallow. And as an opposite field hitter. Here we go. That's in the dirt, smothered by Woolers. One ball, one strike, tension in the seventh. All three games have been white knucklers. That's lobbed into right center field and a running catch is made at her knees by Michaela Packer. Packer was able to use that speed and run to her left.